Hi guys, today uh, I'm making another video on my Evo 8. Um, unfortunately, oil cooler lines have a leak in. There must be a split somewhere because I've got an oil leak, um, which obviously is no good. So I've got no choice but to have to replace. I could replace just the lines, but I bought a Mishimoto upgraded oil cooler, um, slightly bigger than the original better cooling performance and stuff so I thought if I've got to repair the lines I might as well just upgrade the whole thing so that's what we're going to be doing today um, I'll insert a clip in a minute of the oil leak itself it's actually quite quite bad so guys I've just uh, split the rubber seal that goes around the uh, oil cooler line and it's absolutely leaking out of oil I don't know how much further to split this but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So I'm like 95% this is where our problem lies. In the oil cooler lines. Yeah, it's pissing out. I could probably cut a bit more. Oh my god, yeah. I have no idea where the split is, but in there somewhere. So I'm glad it's that because that's what I've ordered, but I wish there was just no oil leak at all. Anyway, yeah, there's the culprit. Um, even though it's not lost a lot of oil when I check the dipstick, it's near enough full, so. disaster waiting to happen so yeah I'm gonna jack the car up get the front bumper off and we'll go from there Okay guys, so yeah, the oil feeder lines are the 24 mil volt. So I'm just gonna get them untightened. I did just crack this one off. So that's the lower one off. Let that drip any oil off that's still in there. And the upper one is a bit harder to get to because of this shield. But I'll uh, be able to get some on there. Okay, that's both of them off. So we're totally disconnected from the oil feed there. We're just going to want to take the cooler off. Okay, so now the lower lines are disconnected. I'm going to take the cooler off, uh, which is bolted in here and up there. So we'll take it off from actually up top, and there's two sort of at the back. Not sure what these are, they could be 10. So it turns out they're 12s. Um, not 13s, not 10s, not 11s, 12s. I'm going to keep those just in case you need to reuse them. I don't think you do, but just in case. Yeah, so that's separated there now. And then get a better angle for you guys. 
we've got two in here one up at the top and you can't see it but it's one up at the bottom directly below so we will get those ones out now Should be it. Yeah, cool. I can't really believe it, but it's starting to absolutely bounce it down. That single one for you. Right when you don't need it to, it'll do it. See how far we can get before we might have to go inside. And postpone this till it's dry. Okay. Oil cooler is off, just like that. Uh, pretty sure we don't need anything off of this. Um, I think the mission motor one's got everything you need. Don't even think you need to use these bolts or whatever. So I'll keep it all to the side for now, and we'll get the new one on the workbench. And uh, you've got to sort of build it up a little bit. Um, so yeah. Three bolts. Right, success. Four bolts, not three. Right, let's get the new one uh, all measured up and fitted. So, I've just unboxed the uh, oil, the new oil, oil cooler. I went for the stealth black option. Didn't know it came with a white M. Doesn't really matter because you can never see that anyway when the bumper's on. Uh, but yeah, you can get it in like a you know chrome silver finish with a black M, or if you go stealth black like I have, uh, it's black with a white M. I think the black will look better. It's only an oil cooler in it; it can't even be seen. So I would say black's probably the better option. We've got all the brackets and necessary hardware, and then the lines are here, which you which will add last to that before we put it on the car. So I'm going to apply the brackets now and then get ready to put the lines on. So that's how your oil cooler wants to be looking. You've got the M logo in front of you. You've got the bracket that springs out on the left. Underneath that is this sort of L-ish piece. It needs to go up, up at the back. And this one is like a you know straight up and the straight piece goes underneath oh sorry on top of the front two bolts so that's how that's situated gonna fit the lines to the cool first then into the car so you've got one that's straight with a 90 on the end that's gonna go to the top of the cooler which when it's tilted that way is this one Right guys, now that's done, uh, on the left side you want your 90 degree and the straight going up and on this side you want the 45 degree going in and then it turns into a 90 degree further up. So I'm going to get this uh, bolted into the car now and fit it. Okay, um, sort of got it situated where you would need it. You um, On this front bracket that goes to the top, take the intercooler bolt out the intercooler support bracket and you're going to go through the oil cooler bracket and back through unloosen for these back two here unloosen the bolt at the very top to give this bracket some slack and then you drill those two into there and the last one goes just through there at the bottom if you can see where the old uh, oil cooler bolted to and the only one you don't use anymore is the top one because it gets replaced by this one so keep all your brackets loose uh, get it all lined up how you want get all your bolts in and then tighten everything up and you'll be you'll be all cool and don't smack yours with a ratchet like i just did here uh, luckily it's black so you can't really tell but yeah that's that um it can be a bit difficult 
to, you know, get it all lined up, we're still playing everything, but once you tighten it up, it'll be fine. Okay guys, so you can see in there, we've got the T-piece fitting on the top uh, oil feed line. And there is the straight one coming down the bottom. So the straight one is a 24 mil and the T-piece is a 27 mil, that one. So uh, it's quite difficult to get anything in there but obviously it is, it's doable, just done it, so now it's time to attach the lines to those, so this one is going to go to the T-piece and this one is going to go to the one that's facing straight down, so I'll get them all bolted up and that's it. After everything's tightened up, I'm going to get your filter in next, so I am going to prime the filter a little bit as well for the same reasons as why we prime the cooler uh, we don't want anything running dry or any air in the system um, also the Evo 8 takes 5.1 litres of oil so what I like to do is put the one in here uh, and yeah it's sort of like a good um, beneficial to this install and obviously what we're doing and topping the oil up on the car if that makes sense so yeah prime this filter put some oil around the rubber ring and whack her in so like I said before the Evos take 5.1 litres 9.5 W40 in you can put 5 W30, 10 W30 um, I'm just going for a little bit of a thicker one Slightly. Um, all those above are fine for these cars. So I'm going to put four, maybe four and a half litres in and check the dipstick and make sure we're not over or if we need to put more in, we'll put more in. Usually though it does take the 5.1. Okay, so I've got about half a litre left in that tub. Uh, more than enough to start it up, uh, there have been no issues. We'll start it up, make sure I have no leaks. Then I want to drop the car off the axle stand because obviously if it's tilted up a bit, I think the dipstick might not show the most accurate readings. I'm going to check this anyway with the dipstick. Yeah, so the dipstick's fine, more than enough. I'm gonna fire it up, make sure we've no leaks. Uh, if we've no leaks, we'll drop it, all done. If we do have some leaks, we might have to tighten some other stuff up. So, check that now. Seems to be fine. No leak. Engine style fine. Don't want it to get too hot. Um, I think it can give you an inaccurate reading on your dipstick. So I'll check one more time. Uh, and we'll turn it off. We have to drop it down, let it cool down, check the oil again, top it up if we need, and that should be it.
Right guys, install's done. Check the oil again, perfect, so all good there. Install went all right. Um, pretty difficult actually, in my circumstances, on a tarmac floor, jack, um, outdoors. But sometimes, you know, I'm no mechanic and stuff, so it's sort of good to be able to show on a channel that anyone can do this sort of stuff with cars even if you're not qualified even if you've not got much experience um, that's why I like making these videos so you can obviously if you're the same as me don't have like you know a, a unit or anything no ramp no lift you can do these jobs they're difficult but you know nothing good comes easy so yeah I hope the video helps um, I'll be honest from, from filming it doesn't seem like my usual video I like to be a bit more in depth and show a bit more but because I'm under a car I can't get the right angles and stuff and with the nature of the install being sort of like the oil I really didn't want to mess anything up so I sort of just stayed a little bit away from filming certain shots just to make sure everything's tight so the only advice I can give you is make sure everything is tight before you know you put everything back together but yeah install's done you can just I'm glad you can see it. Um, yeah, so install's done. New oil cooler. If I push a bigger horsepower, this is a very beneficial mod. For now, I'm not going to feel any difference, but it's sort of a peace of mind thing, and it had to be done. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.